So, tell me a little bit about yourself. That's what we often hear in a job interview. There's various places where we go where people want us to give an account. Well, this is what we're going to be seeing Jesus do in this passage of Scripture. Hi, my name is Brian Lee Davidson Terka, and I am going through the book of John, the Gospel of John right now. Currently, we're on the fifth chapter of the Gospel of John, and what I'm about to read is coming from chapter 5, verses 31 through the end at 47. Okay, so let's see what Jesus has to say. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is true. You have sent John you have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy that light. So John the Baptist, he's talking about John the Baptist here. This isn't John, the author of the book of John. He's talking about John the Baptist coming before him, kind of making way for making way for the king. This is, this is John's testimony. He's saying, Jesus is coming. Here is a baptism that reminds us to, that we are, washing away our sins uh, in light of the gospel that is coming. So uh, John John brought this powerful symbolism in and um, when Christ came, Christ himself asked to be baptized by John. So we have this we have this interaction in regards to Jesus' own testimony uh, with John. And Christ explains that, is explaining, you know, uh, there was someone here before me that was, was a testimony to my coming. So that, that's, that's what we, we're seeing here. I have a testimony weightier than that of John. Now, at the time, you know, John, John was the man. This is the guy you were going to. This is the people that people were talking about. He's this guy in the wilderness. He's baptizing people. He's talking about the Messiah coming. But now he says that there's somebody who has a weightier testimony than John. For the work of the Father, for the work that the Father has given me to finish, the very work that I am doing testify that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has testified concerning me, has testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one who has sent me. You don't believe that God has sent me, is what he's saying. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that, testi that testify about me. Okay, so Christ is saying, he's saying, I'm, this, I'm the Messiah that you, were that you were told about. Yet you refuse to come, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. This would have hit the Pharisees really hard. These are like the big, big religious guys. You know, if you're religious and you tell somebody, you know, you're getting this wrong. They're often not too happy with you. If 
you're religious and they're holding the religiosity really, really tightly to their chest, you know, um, it's like this, this is my identity. My religion, my religiousness is my identity. Well, this is what Christ is hitting the Pharisees with right now. I have come in my father's name and you do not accept me, but if someone else comes in his own name, you accept him. So that's interesting. So he's pointing out, look, I'm coming here on behalf of God and you're not accepting me. But if I came here saying, Hey, you know what? Check me out. I'm Jesus. I'm awesome. If that's what he was doing, you know, he's like, he points out, it's like you would accept somebody coming to them with their, with their own ego, but you're not accepting me coming on behalf of the father. It's an interesting thing to think about there. How can you believe since you accepted, since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from only God? He's kind of, he's, that's, that's got to be a punch in the institution right there. That, you know, it's like, but I'm religious, you know, and I, I can imagine just, I mean, they all right, they already wanted to kill him, you know, that before, uh, before this, you have people talking about how they want to kill Jesus. And now he's, he's bringing this up. It's like, look, you're glorifying men for the sake of men, for the sake of religious culture or politics or a mix of both. But here I'm coming, you know, with, with the, with the real thing, the, the full real presence of God to you and you don't want it. <laughs> Let's continue to the end, but do not think I will accuse you before the father. Your accuser is Moses on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? So here Jesus comes and is telling people, look, I know you're not going to believe me. This is a continuation of his discussion uh, from the answer that he, that he, uh, that he was, um, giving to people who were upset that he was doing good things on the Sabbath. And sometimes we get this way. Sometimes we get to a point where it's like, where we get to the point where we're asking ourselves the question, what's the point? And Jesus is is there it looks like with the very gospel laying laying it out it's like okay look you don't believe this i get it you're not going to accept the reality that god has sent me i get that you're the kind of you are from your scripture the people who are supposed to believe this you're, you're the priestly class, you're, um, you're saluting Moses in your words and your mind, but Jesus is calling them out on that. And, you know, he, uh, it's hard to be called out. It's hard to, to hear, to hear what did you just do? You know, or it's like, or even sometimes gently hearing, hearing, I don't know if that's how you should go about that. You know, it, it, it's hard to be corrected, but this is what Jesus is giving religious society right now. He's, he's giving them an intense theological correction in regards to the reality that is him into the reality of what their belief is. 
If if I come here and say, hey, you know what, guys, look, I'm Brian here, you know, and I'm I'm establishing Brian. You know, maybe that will be valuable on Earth. You know, um, it's like, okay, okay, gotta stay on brand, gotta gotta, you know, it's like think about my audience and and knowing how to communicate to an audience is important. I I understand that. But if it's if that is becoming the idol, if that is becoming if that is becoming the um, the quest as opposed to to understanding that that as Christians who've accepted Christ, we are priests, we are representing God, then I've I've failed big time. And I, you know, I'd love to be working in a church. I would, I, I, I'd love that. But, um, but if that is ever at the expense of, of, um, of honesty, you know, of if, if I'm taking, if I'm taking in my presence at a building or an institution in place of the relationship that Christians have with Christ and the importance of that, then I wouldn't be doing myself or anyone else any good, you know? But, you know, uh, I am where I am. I'm making these Bible videos for my family and friends and uh, those people know that that it's sincere so God be with you during this time where many of us are practicing social distancing um, I pray that we can find that we're all actually still closer than we thought we were during this time you guys take care all right bye bye